was born just after one o'clock in the morning on the 5th of July 1996 and the following day was diagnosed with Down syndrome. Struggling to breathe and feed in his first weeks of life, he underwent open heart surgery at three months old. Additional issues were diagnosed by various professionals and therapists throughout Oliver's early years and caused them to predict that his muscle tone was so poor he would never be able to take part in any kind of sporting activity and that his verbal dyspraxia meant it was unlikely his speech would ever be understood by an unfamiliar listener. Well, we soon proved them all wrong. Oliver watched his photographer stepfather Mike using a camera and at around 9 or 10 years old he showed a real interest in wanting to do the same. It became obvious very early on that Oliver had an eye for framing and composition. Oliver was a photographer. What's up? Okay, push the button. Pretty. It's a beaver, isn't it? Uh, no, it's a, it's a prairie dog. Oh, it's a prairie dog? Yeah. Okay. They're very common. They're quite scarce. Of course, hunters, they're very... They sound alarms. They can actually, when they hear a person come in, they'll run back in, the, back in their burrows. So they're, so they're aware of panthers yeah. come near them. Okay. So that's how wildlife is. So if you're out there making films or anything like that, just film these. These are fantastic creatures to me, and they're so unique. When you're out here, I mean, we've come all the way to America for this, but when you're with like animals and nature, in your heart, what does that make you feel like? Just it's all about like the feeling. It catches you for like a moment. 
and when you take a picture you can feel it in you so it makes you feel that you're owning a picture that is a favorite image and when you take a landscape or an animal you can still want that creature to be in the flesh but with the crop wise when you're taking, it, when you're taking that you can have like a bird in it or a wild cat so that can catch you and think it's in the forest so that everyone else could see it and that's a talent for me in person as a celeb I can still be myself so if I'm taking a picture of that it's my favourite I can, be, I can still be out there making more pictures, so I'm like, a, like an artist, really, like. Somebody said to me that you'd said to them that when you're taking your pictures, you feel like the real you. Yeah. Is that how you feel? It is. So you're looking for the detail, aren't you? Yeah. You're always looking for that detail that nobody else can see? No. And does that come naturally to you? Do you see that detail before anyone else? Yes. There's a talent for me, so I can still think about what kind of species, what kind of feel to it. So if you're taking a picture of that, it catches you for a moment. So when people are looking at your photographs, yeah. they're kind of looking into your soul, aren't they? Yes. That's true. This guy's got a skull on that, also like that. That's very nice. Ollie, would you like to make a book about this area? I would, definitely. Yeah. Oh, like that. I really like that. What are, you, what are you feeling here? What kind of pictures? Well, really, I feel about, well, about something of like death and field. Okay, so you're going to go, you're going to be taking the pictures up the river. Yeah. With the tree and that angle on that bend, aren't you? Yeah. Okay, let's do it. describe Ollie's photography generally? It, it's a really natural eye that he's got for seeing pictures which is the, it's the one thing you can't teach someone. I can teach someone to use a camera but you need to be able to see a picture and Oliver sees a slightly different picture to the rest of us. It's the um, small details, um, it doesn't need to be as clean as most of us as photographers would look at but he likes, he likes small details and uh, shafts of light 
um, but it really is on a small scale and it, here we're looking at splashes and the thing that's got him growing is the, uh, the tiny water droplets and the splashes that are coming off the rocks. So that uh, it just makes it a little bit different, it's the sort of thing that the rest of us are missing as we're watching it. Uh, Oliver picks up so much detail. Um, and in the early days, I was trying to persuade him to be a bit more like me, and that was a bit of a waste of time. What he needed to do was to do his own thing. Uh, and we get back and look at the computer and I have to go, oh yeah, sorry, that's what we saw. Because uh, we don't always see it. Oh, sorry. This my film. Yes. These are good. Cool. Look at that. I mean, that's just amazing. Yeah. That's cool. You know, right now, a lot of the birds from up north are coming here, oh, right, they, okay. they spend the winter. But we have over 230 species right. of birds, okay. and, and uh, lots of woodpeckers, oh, okay, yeah. so we put suet out, oh, yeah. so that's the suet. Right. And then uh, right now we have lots of thrushes, oh, okay. and uh, the thrushes are coming here. Oh, we get cool. chickadees, oh, yeah. you have uh, species of titmouse there, oh, yeah. but we have a tufted one. Right. Sometimes I come up in the morning and I have these lights, oh, yeah. little square oh, lights, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. and I put the lights inside the cabin before oh, yeah. daylight, oh, yeah. and it looks like somebody's living there. Oh, right. And then you take the pictures yeah. before with the lights right, inside. Yeah. It's a good misty day to be up here, Oliver. Oh, yeah. It makes it feel like... You wonder how it must have been years ago when people lived here. Oh yeah. This cabin is quite old. Oliver, we're just, uh, this place, they called it Jungle Brook, was the old, oh, okay, the name yeah. of the farm. Oh yeah, yeah. And uh, from the time I was a little boy, my dad used to bring me up here. Oh yeah. Uh, even before I could walk, he was probably carrying me in these mountains, but uh, oh, lovely. it's, uh, it's, everything changes a little bit because of the different trees growing and the animals you see more sometimes than others. When I started uh, in, in photography, 
it was just because I was fascinated with everything around me and I wanted people to to see the beautiful things I was seeing. That's oh, yeah. what you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, more and more I would take those to school or take those to my friends and show them photos. And and then at a point I wanted to share it with more people so I started to make prints and show those in different public places. Okay. And, and later I just opened a gallery and now after uh, after 40 years I have two galleries and I I really enjoy talking to yeah. people because the things you and I do cause people to to see things that yeah, maybe they right. never wanted yeah. to see before. No. This has always been part of my childhood and now my my adulthood coming here and enjoying oh, yeah. this farmstead. So I hope you really like it here. Yeah, it would. We'll see a lot of birds and yeah. animals today and a lot of really nice That's scenes. Cool horse as well. And uh, with the way you see things, you'll yeah. see a thousand pictures before yeah. we get to the top of the yeah. mountain. So uh, th this will be our good starting point, and then we'll just build on this and, and see more and more as yeah, we go. Yeah, good, yeah. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Good. Did you see the, the chipmunk that's moving along the rocks up here? Oh, yeah. Well, they're, they're quite friendly. Okay. And it can be deer in, in the barn. We're getting to autumn now, so when it's spring or winter, you can see all kinds of birds coming in and wildlife and if that was my dream coming here one day a week, maybe with you or something like that, we can still see deer coming in and hopefully we can see lots of high badgers. Yes. We could even see badgers and deer and stuff like that. So that would be like my dream right there. So hopefully that we could inspire other things like trees and Yes. And stuff like that. Yes. We can see like chipmunks and stinks and stuff like that so hopefully we can see the difference right there so once you see the bird in the tree and you get yeah enjoy the bird then you start looking closer yeah. at the tree yeah yeah that's that's a good way to see I hadn't thought of so that now it'd be like getting the the image correct yes. as well as taking taking pictures for me it's like a feeling so if I'm taking a picture that's my favorite image I think that would be my favorite as an older point of view, you'd think that that picture would be different than anything. Right. So that would be my, my best image would be like an oak wow. or or a bear. Something yeah. like that would be amazing. So that can still go ahead for my career. So hopefully I can still do my best. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you always will, I think, because what you just described is a sensitivity. Yeah. You know, you just feel things and yeah. and you recognize things and. Uh, you know, we're such a, everyone's such a hurry in the world, yeah. they step across the things, but yeah. you, you become so sensitive to those yeah. things, you don't want to miss anything. No, no. That's a wonderful way to be. Just great. Do you like these bright colors? Yeah, I love them, man. It's just vibrant, isn't it? It is, very vibrant. So we have fog, and then we have the trees that have seemingly been burned, but there's putting up new growth even from the roots. Yeah, it is. It is good. Yeah. I like the way you see. Yeah. Is that you know that limb that curves over and then you got the red leaves on it? Yeah. That's really great. Very good. We'll walk up and see if we find this overlook's probably going to show us lots more color. Let me see what you're seeing. Oh, see the little veins and the yeah. brown on that? Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, they're too pretty. That's nice. I really like that. That's one of my favorites. Yeah. Because the fog, you know, you got the red. Yeah, fog. yeah. Good. Good stuff. Let me show you something. Oh, yeah? This is a plastic bottle. It's a juice bottle. Oh, yeah. But let me show you something interesting about this. The bear found it. See those teeth? Oh, yeah. He's chewed it all the way up around here. Oh, blimey. Yeah, he, he smelled the sugar inside the juice bottle. Oh, yeah. 
So he decided to take a chomp. The moral of the story is don't carry a juice bottle in your pocket. Yeah, you can't, no. That's big poor. Yeah, he just drunk. Yeah. Did some pretty good. I guess he got everything out he, he wanted. He did, yeah. Huh. Oh, that's cool. This yellow. Oh yeah. And if he comes up here, you know, I've got their call right here. On my phone. So I'm gonna call him in. I know he wants to meet you, Oliver. I'm just trying to convince him that we're just friends. Oh, well, yeah. If you stand up, you can get him right here. Come over my way just a foot. Can you see right behind that? You see his head bobbing right behind this stick? He'll come back up. There he is. He's up here. There he went. Well, now they're calling back to us. Oh, you see him on the lamp? Smoky Mountains so far. Very good. Very good? Yeah. I think you agree with this place. Oh yeah. Yeah, you'd fit right in. Yeah. And a chair. Yeah. I'm probably moving it all night. This is, a, and this was a schoolhouse. It was, yeah. Can you imagine trying yeah. to study in here? 
Hey. It's like a tulip, the leaf. Oh, okay. You got all these dark edges. Yeah, you can, yeah. Can I ask you just very briefly what you think of what you've seen of Oliver's work so far? You know, Oliver, in my, in my sense of having been around a few years and been photographing all my life, uh, Oliver's got a special gift. It's almost like God's compensation. He's given him things that uh, you and I don't have. He's allowed him to see deeper than, than the average person sees. Uh, he has a, a wonderful uh, sensitivity to uh, patterns and, and small things. And uh, it, it's, it, it's wonderful to watch because uh, he's also got a, uh, he just gets excited about things. That's part of the wonder of it all. But uh, he's definitely, he definitely has that special touch. and. Uh, and I'm just thankful that he's able to photograph and share what he sees because uh, we're all better off for it. That's special. All right. You write faster than I do. Yep. You should have been, you could have been a doctor. I could be, yeah. No, they write real fast. You can't read oh, yeah. anything they say. No, you can't, can you? No. Okay. All right, my friend. Thank you. That's all right. That's for you. Thank you. And I want to as well. Okay. Well, I will enjoy this every minute. Thanks, Oliver. That's all right. Till we meet again. Yes, we will. Which will be soon. It will. Because you're going to my house. Well, yes. Yeah. Uh, and get bacon. Yeah, well, I got bacon. Birds and bacon, I mean. Yeah. That, that pretty much. And sold. chocolate. Yeah, and we eat five meals a day. And chocolate. Yeah. Yeah, and chocolate. We got I chocolate. Took lots of chocolate.
Dolly's closet. It's her style, but it's your size. Because let's be real, no one The year you were born. There you are. What's this one? What, the big one there? Yeah. That's for, that was her album, the one that's the Dolly's Greatest Hits. And how many sales has it been? She sold a million copies of that. Wow. Um, and make a special one. Make a special one if you get one special a million. This is actually one of the busiest videos. Is it Christmas? More so. Hi, Simon. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I saw that one. Yeah. Look at the front of it. Oh, yeah. The yes. grill. Yeah. It's like teeth. Barring does, teeth. Yeah. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> <laughs> recently on Facebook that reminded me of some Lord of the Rings stuff. Sorry, I'm a Lord of the Rings fan. Um, and about his life, the fact that he has Down syndrome, and that our youngest of nine children, our son Philip, has Down syndrome. So that's special. There's that special connection there. No, no, no. I'm not Lord of the where I've been following this page and then I saw she put something up about Smoky Mountains, which is obviously very close. Um, and so I was super excited and I just reached out thinking there's no way he's so famous that I'm not gonna be able to 
um, get in touch, but then it worked out, and she was welcoming of me and um, one of my students <laughs> um, to kind of learn a little bit more about him and um, see some of his work. Somehow I became aware of his photography. I, I have a son with Down syndrome, so it must be a connection through that. Uh, but frankly, I looked at his work and was genuinely moved by it. And about a year and a half or two years ago, I bought one of his prints and it's hanging above my mantle. It has been for over a year. I got the picture of a robin. Uh, and there's something about his photography that I really connect with. I'm a biologist and I've got some training in art and so his nature photography somehow speaks to me. I'm just going to add that uh, I'm kind of a point and shoot Kodak Instamatic kind of guy, but through Chris's uh, love of photography and everything, I, I, I picked up on how competitive it really is and, and the talent that's out there, and that's kind of what makes Oliver so special to me, because truly he's, he's some kind of a prodigy um, to get this far, you know, and accomplish what he's accomplished in a few short years is, is really... Quite remarkable. It is. It's extremely remarkable. I watched his videos online and when I found out that he was coming to take pictures of my home, the Smoky Mountains, I was thrilled and I cannot wait to see what Oliver gets out of these because I know that he will capture what is special and beautiful about this part of the world and it is special and beautiful. Yeah. I've heard that oh, up in the trees up there somewhere. Who knows? Who knows? Tell me if that's if that's better. Yeah, that's better. 
Yeah. Where are we going? Right there, mate. Let's take some pictures. You alright? Okay, let's go. What pictures have we taken so far this morning? What kind of stuff have we uh, got? Trees, uh, throwing down leaves, uh, maybe we get a bald eagle, hopefully, and hopefully we can get a, a spotted fire and hope we can find some more birds, if we can can. And what about the views over the side of the mountains? What have you thought of those? They're quite beautiful. When you see them up close, they're stunning. You've so ne we've never seen anything like that, have no, we? No, rather. What does it make you feel? Great. I hope I'm down with the kids. I'm going back out in the Aleutians again. No, no, no. Uh, you, want you want up? You want up? You want up? Come on, I'll pick you up. Even up in Sitka, that Come on. I don't want you to America's pretty. Cool. <laughs> Come on, Dad. 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 Come on, Big thing. I mean, being here is like on be part of their lives. For me, and that that means the world to me. So that gives me the kind of way of communicating with people that I'm meeting and being with people that I don't even know. They're still my part of me, and and that's part of me thinking I could do more and tower. So for me, it's it sounds people and gives people hope by like being with people that I'm getting on with can get the better of me so I get nervous and I get emotional sometimes so to me I don't get that feeling so if you get any response or any questions just ask me because I have a talk for so just ask me anything just just follow me on Facebook just go for it just go and like it it's, it's all about being and being grown up means a lot, so for me I'm going to get emotional, so yeah. Where are we now? Me in the old school. And what are we doing? We're sort of my exhibition. And your exhibition is where? Where are we? We're in the old school, which is uh, the office. And do we know what part of the country this is? Uh, no. Okay. I think it's in Somerset, I think. It, we're in Somerset, aren't we? Yes. It's a place called Western Zoyland. That's right. So I just wanted to ask you two, we've been in America with, with Oliver over the last sort of... Well, you've been out there two weeks. Yeah. You know, as, as his folks, what did it mean to take him out there? What did it actually mean to kind of get him abroad? Shall I go first? Yes, you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it was, it, 
obviously it was a massive opportunity for him and the place to go and visit that place was something we could simply never have done otherwise we could never have gone to that place so that's absolutely wonderful um, but also it, for, for, for Oliver it presented him with some challenges that, that he had to cope with and, and manage um, which was a real learning process for him too which was a, a great thing to do and just the opportunity to go to somewhere like that that looked so different and, and the, the vast expanse that would be available to him and the, and the wildlife and the bird life and everything just um, a really wonderful and fantastic opportunity for him to be able to do that and uh, it's just so exciting something it's a trip of a lifetime something we would never have imagined he would have been able to do so behind you there are yeah. all these photographs from your recent trip to America yeah and I was going to ask you what was your favorite part of being in the Smoky Mountains it was just being there was like a feeling it just felt right I mean Ken did so well to go with friends we took part in everything so it was a small journey. Did you feel that you learned a lot from Ken? Yes, I did. I, he knew my eye and he knew my eye, so it was nothing that I never dreamed of doing. So he was like that kind of person who would see this and think, gosh, this is amazing to meet Orion. And I think that he is part of my family and he's, he's like a friend, basically. That's, he's like the, the joy of seeing him seeing his book make me feel happy. It's one of those things and it's, it's a with Oliver it's a personality thing and it's, it, you can never really tell but sometimes he will just actually click with someone and with Ken that was very obvious very quickly so we sat down to breakfast and it is, there's a connection there that happens very rapidly and you look across as, as we do as parents over the, and you look over and think oh that's going to be alright. But what I loved about that particularly was that they connected as photographers. Yes. That was that was how and why they connected. They were all they were immediately talking about wildlife yeah. and birds and and photography. So they connected as photographers and because of their mutual love and enjoyment of of nature, of wildlife and landscape and of nature. That was that that was the that was the connection that they made and, and, and how it was made and that was that was lovely to see that. And it was it was one of those instant mm -hmm. connections that happens from time to time uh, and it's just that that's a lifelong friendship burned instantly just right there and the fact that Ken picked up very quickly that it was just it was a, a similar attitude to him to the world world around him and, and taking some sort of wonder was the word that Ken used yeah. and just being able to appreciate the stuff that's around you did he inspire you did he, he did. sort of look at things and think I can do what Ken's doing yes he just caught my eye so that was just everything I wanted from him and he taught me how that birds can sing, and so that's part of him saying, look at this bird, you know, this is photography about my passion. So for him to meet me was just everything I wanted in it. And so that was my best bit of being in America, was just everything I wanted. Is the kind of plan to kind of give him more big adventures like this, if possible? If they're possible. <laughs> <laughs> then, then yes, absolutely. It, it's a, it's a, it's a stepping stone. So pro progress is being made all the time, and uh, he now know what's he knows now what to expect when you go mm. to a big airport like Heathrow, which of course he didn't know before, uh, and uh, he would he's better able to cope with and manage situations that we might never have encountered before. But now we we too might be a little braver. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we can draw. Other people were in tomorrow and that's, that's special for me, to see friends thinking, okay, I want to be part of this life, where it's something that I can never enjoy more. You know, you try not to not do things just because you think it might be a little bit difficult for them, because he will continually surprise us as to what he can do and what he can get on with. Because he's a little bit awesome. Because he is a little bit awesome. <laughs> just a final thing then, Tennessee and the Smoky Mountains. Uh, what did you guys make of it? Um, Fabulous place. Yes, I mean, there isn't, there isn't a word really. I don't, I'm not quite sure he would articulate that in one sentence. Mm. But um, it was it was incredible, it was beautiful, it was a, a massive experience, a huge opportunity, um, and something we absolutely can't thank enough all the people who were involved and made it happen. Such a friendly bunch. Lovely people. Lovely people. Who did you? <laughs> Not from that. And you're from that. <laughs> <laughs>